Well, AI, artificial intelligence is all over the place. Like I, I dove into that pretty hard. I'm still looking for the application that would help someone sell more copiers. All right, the AI application. Right. And I'd love it to be from the SMB, you know, below $5 million dealership all the way up to the enterprise and the OEMs. I did find one that is free sales. It does use real live artificial intelligence. It's not AI whitewater, whitewatered, whitewashed. Um, and I may have spoken to you about it before, but it, it comes out of the um, event coordinator industry, right? If you're going to schedule events like, like, uh, like, like uh, Evite. Well, it's kind of like that, but it's like if you were to manage, say, ECS or you know what any of our shows, you get you were going to manage it like the right. old Fultizo shows, right? You got to manage mm -hmm. the people that come in, blah 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 blah. Right. Um, but these folks were were managing the attendees to find, and they were doing this manually, like last six, seven, eight years. Find out, you know, ABC. The president of ABC company is going to be here, and the president of his competitor is going to be there. We don't want them in the same room at the same time, kind of thing. All right? right. So they were they were trying to match, and then on the, on the opposite end, they would take personalities A and personalities A and put them in the same sessions or at the same table. So they had this huge matrix and whiteboard, and you know newspaper clippings and stuff like that that would tell okay this guy knows this but you know we can probably guess that if they sit at the same table they're going to have some conversations right they're not going to be competing against each other they're not going to be arguing but based on what we can glean these guys should have a good conversation these guys should. well they took that that idea and that philosophy and started to apply it to enterprise salespeople like microsoft and intel right. salespeople and they would land uh, uh meetings with high-end C-level ownership type folks and their vice presidents. And these would be typically dinner meetings. So they developed this process to gain intelligence on not only who they were meeting with, well, initially, but their vice president or those tag along so that they would have a, a portfolio or a dossier on these people, right. right? So a little more intelligence. Well, this evolved into weddings. That was a long story, but um, seating charts at weddings. You know, we don't want Aunt Bertha sitting with Eddie so-and-so from, you know, all this stuff. So their seating chart had to be set up. Um, on and on and on it went until a year and a half ago, they decided to try and do the same thing for salespeople. All right. If you've got a, you've got a meeting with uh, the CEO of ABC Manufacturing, 500 employees, it would go out and do the intelligence work that we would typically do right before, like I should say, theoretically, we would do before a sales call, right, to prepare. When I say right. we, I mean everyone. You and I might do it, but not everyone would do it. All the discovery. Um, yeah, discovery, but before yeah. you're even meeting. So I know that this guy's like, you know, the uh, basics. Got it, got it, yeah. got it. Yeah, basics. Well, yeah. what they did is they started to dig even deeper and scrape the interwebs. All right. So, and they, we're talking high end, higher, you know, big complex sales. Okay. Now, hold on for a minute. Right. You mentioned for people who may not know, interwebs. <laughs> the internet <laughs> got it you're right i'm sorry i didn't mean that. I, I was just I hate jargon might have been something different no the interwebs evolved into the internet <laughs> got it. anyway so they would scrub they have a software long story short they have a, a process that goes out and sees if this person for instance spoke at a ted talk in 2000 one or two, you know, goes back. It searches the internet for not just the surface level intelligence, but other things. And it'll even dive into if so-and-so attended a seminar online for something to see something, right? So it grabs all this intelligence. So could and it then, also grab everybody they're connected to? Yes. So obviously it jumps into LinkedIn, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And it'll go out and check that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And it goes out to the press releases, goes out to the, you know, this is public information, right? This is no super secret satellites in the right. sky kind of stuff. But there's a lot out there. There's a oh, yeah. mess load. Um, there may be some proprietary stuff. But basically, they were telling me, you can just do regular, if you have enough, a big enough engine and all this, it takes that data and then does some AI to it, right? To right. figure out not only here's your general intelligence on this particular contact, but this is how you should approach it based on who you are, what you're representing and who you're talking to. So it messages both profiles and gives you a talk, quote unquote, talk track. I'm making it real simple, 
but they're given it's an intelligence. So it isn't like when we used to do it. Okay, it's a CEO. They manually nut. They manufacture screws and bolts for the defense department. So there's a profile that you can pretty much guess at mm -hmm. what kind of person it is. Well, this goes in deeper. Not only that, but last year he keynoted an event at such and such. Blah 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 blah. Right. So you can get into that detail. Of, right. Could, could yeah. it even could it could it even give you uh, personality uh, traits? That's where the AI comes in. Yes. Right. Now this is based on the info it scrapes. So you know, take it for what it's worth. But and it's Got just it. like artificial intelligence. The more it's used, the better it gets. Right. So, I mean, um, and the bigger the data, that that whole that whole methodology remains the same. Right. But they're pointing it at the whole internet and their their algorithms and their both training methods are are set up in such a way that a salesperson could take advantage of whatever the information is gleaned out of this ai so i found now this is this is their talk track to me when all i've heard up until you know from from the very beginning is oh yeah well we were going to do you know yeah we've been doing artificial intelligence for the last six years and there are lots of people in our industry that are saying that and when you dig down into it it's just sp spreadsheets so, you know, right. predictive analytics. Remember that used to be a big word yeah. or a big phrase for yeah. it still is. But all that is is taking a guess at, you know, how many images go through this, how many uh you know, what's the lifespan of whatever the the the, the consumable is on this particular whatever it is based on the history, then then you know, it's just math. Well, you're gonna need a new system, a new thing majigger in ninety days or ninety two days, whatever it is, it's just math. It's not intelligence. It's just rote. That that's that's machine language, if anything. So, anyway, that's a long story. Well, I did find that one. Um, there's another company that is a training company, and you actually talk to the AI. You try and sell the AI. It's called Sell Me This Pen. Believe it or not, is the name of the company. And now I've I've gone through it. You know, nothing's as good as talking to a human yet, but it's dang, dang close. Not in the way it talks back, you know, there's a pause, right? So there's still that, <laughs> but the answers that come back and the objections that come back are real. Right. It's just a speech impediment at this point, right? right? It isn't, it is not, remember the old days, well, prospect says A, you say B. And if then they say C, then, you, you know, you could just do a decision tree right, right. based on whatever. This is not that. This so is, the speech, uh, the speech pattern is kind of like that guy from, uh, what was that commercial back in the 90s? Uh, Coca Cola guy was it? Was, oh, was that the FedEx Coke? guy? Remember the FedEx no, guy? No, not the FedEx <laughs> guy. Uh, oh, I can't remember. Damn, but it was uh, uh, animated. It was an at, supposed to be an animated person doing the Max Headroom. Max Headroom, the guy had a, a motorcycle accident and then he became a newscaster of some sort. And he goes, dit, dit, dit. He'd always yeah, be, yeah, yeah. That, maybe, maybe that could have been it. <laughs> uh, that's Max Headroom. Well, that's one. There was probably more, but yeah, it is, you know, right now, speech. And I'm telling you right now, it, it, you know, two months ago, if some, if an artificial intelligence calls you up on the phone, you can tell, right? It right. can say, you and I can tell. Our parents may not be able to tell, but we can tell. So, okay, this is a machine talking to me. All right. right. It, she's, she's got a British accent because studies show that a British accent is more engaging than a, an American, whatever the hell that is. So, right. um, but it's getting better. Right. And, you know, I hate to even say this, I mean, I know we're really talking about it. It's like when chat GPT first came out, I trained it to interview me as it was Johnny Carson and to base its questions on my answers to it. I didn't think it could do it, but it did. I mean, I don't remember, it, but it was, I was just amazing right. enough that if, if I were to say something totally off the wall, it would come back and try and pull right. that back into the conversation. So, oh my God. Wouldn't, that's wouldn't, great. wouldn't, wouldn't it be, I don't know if it would be cool, but if it would be interesting for leads. What do you mean? Well, um, let's say secretary of state releases, uh, all that, uh, lease information it's uh all out there it's public right um yeah. how about if uh you know ai was able to uh take care of that and alert you oh I, yeah i mean i know they have services that do that now but 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 i mean well here's the way to think of it art and in, in general <laughs> any of those services and this applies to every industry any of those services can be done 
buy an artificial intelligence. And by any, I mean contract management, service calls, help tickets, yes, managing mm-hmm. databases that come out and you know, we're scraping a database mm-hmm. to tell me who's got this, that, and the other thing coming up in the next 30, 60, 90 days. I, That's easy. Yeah. I might I might I might try putting a couple uh threads in and see what happens. Yeah. You, all you gotta do, all you gotta do. Well, you have to have access to the interwebs, the internets from the AI, and that's relatively right. new with some of them. Um, but does Chat GBT offer that? Four point it does have internet. Yeah, and it also allows you know. Well, now we're getting into it. So it has native internet, but that's just it goes through Bing. I'm not too fond of Bing, but it works okay. But you can right. run Chat GPT with a set of add-ons that don't that doesn't use Bing. It uses another way. So, yeah. Um, but you know, while we're on the subject, if you look at AI and Chat GPT in selling copiers, let's go right down to the trenches, right? There is plenty of opportunity there for a sales rep at the sales rep level to use it and save a shitload of time. It's and it looks good. It's not like the olden days when you did a mail merge and you know the last name came out wrong and all this stuff and the content yep. didn't make any sense. It's it's scary good when it comes to crap like that. It's like, all right, I just had a meeting. Here are my notes from the meeting. Write a letter. And I scheduled another meeting for next Thursday. And it sounds great. Yes. Yes. Okay. I've actually, I've actually used it a couple of times with some, um, how can I say, uh, uh, emails that needed, um, um, how can I say, uh, additional questions or questions mm-hmm. that were um, a, a little bit deeper that I had to look into. Mm-hmm. And I, I just took time and re- put it into GP and I, I, you know, it gave me the answers that I was looking for. And then I was able to condense that and send it. And. Oh, okay. Work, so you, work. you did some research and then got research out of it and then communicated that back to help your case move forward. Is that well, and, and to answer some of the, uh, some of the questions on the, uh, uh, on the email that was posed to me oh you know some of the, the time you spent sometimes just on research right going from this website to that website to this website i mean you could put it yep. in the ai in, in 15 seconds you that have is... every you, you have everything you need but like you said before you've just got to review it to make sure it's correct right and, and like you said before, that the, the you know the artificial intelligence and, and, and the time saving, as far as I'm concerned, and the research that we spend sometimes uh, can cut cut it down tremendously. It, and of course, it absolutely. comes back to uh, 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 we can, we can do we can do we can do more with less, right? Yep. That's I saw a figure come out when a uh, when it first hit the market that uh, GPT 3.5 allows two people to do the work of 10 and these are knowledge workers right, right these are right. our bread and butter office cube dweller right. you know walk up to the copier kind of people right um two out of ten and then and that changed the whole investment formula too i you know we're getting off on it but if you remember all the layoffs that the high techs had right and there was a time when you could the value of your your new business was one of the components that gauged that was your headcount, especially when you had VCs and investment in the high techs. So that's why you saw a lot of these high tech companies have tens of thousands of employees. Cause I can guarantee you Twitter X can be run with just 12 people. It's, it's a computer company. You don't have to have 10,000 people on the payroll unless you want to look good to your investors and say, Hey, our headcount went up by 15% because we're such a good, and powerful software company. Look at right. Google. Look at uh, what's the big medical billing companies? Um, oh shit, I forget. But these are software companies. They're not making machines, copiers, automobiles. There's nothing coming out of that factory except for what's between the ears. And whatever right. that is, you know, you can have ten guys in a room thinking on how to keep the the the, the wheels running. I anyway. So. So back to your original, yeah, AI is there. And I think that at the individual level, that's where we need to excel. I don't see right, right. now dealers, ownerships. I Well, I, I see they should be investigating. The powers that be should have their fingers not on the pulse. They should be using AI every single day. 
right? Just so that they can steer their organizations one way or another. To right. ignore it is stupid. It's just all right. It's gonna, you're going to get run over. On the individual, as a salesperson, we should be using it every single day. We got to get better at analyzing and our, our questions into ChatGP. Make us better in front of the customer, though, too. Um, what type it's, of questions do I want to ask? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. How can uh, I embellish this uh, a little bit more? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's interesting. I'm down to the point where I think three months ago I was maybe once a week. Um, now I'm up to three to four times a week. I'm using it for yeah. all, all different applications, whether it's personal, whether it's business, it's it's just a, an, an incredible time saver. Hey, this is the one, yeah, go ahead. So so I got, um, um, I've got uh, someone is on the show, but I guess uh, it says there's three, but I, for our inaugural show, I guess that's not that bad, right? Bad. Um, but for some for, reason, for two I, days worth of notice, it's fine. Once we get this thing rolling, I agree. I, I agree. I think we'll. Uh, uh, I think we'll do very well. So, so, so we can probably just go back and forth, and you can now ask me anything. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's. See. Okay. Well, I, I'll, I'll throw this one. It might be a softball. So. <laughs> As a sales rep, I know you to be very successful in through tough times. And I may I know that you've made a transition of some sort, a pivot in the last 18 months. And I believe it's like from A3, A4 to wide format. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that? And then if you could just because I touched on wide format and I've sold a few, but you know, not a year's worth like you have. What are the differences? Because I know there are, but Illustrate the difference in so, the selling of those versus A3, A4. Sure. So I've always been a fan of uh, wide format. Uh, I embraced it uh, many, many years ago. Um, and as I saw page uh, click started to uh, uh, erode, um, I concentrated more on where the page clicks are still there, right? And that mm -hmm. the page clicks are still Still they are, they're not as much as they used to, but they're not dropping as far, much as they do in the uh, in the office. So so wide formats are to me it's a double, it's a double, it's a double whammy. Not only do uh, architects, engineers, and construction need wide format machines, but they also have their traditional A3 devices. They all have A3 devices. So if you listen to certain people in their industry. Well, A3 is not needed. Nobody's doing 1117s anymore, mm -hmm. uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that's not true in the um, AEC industry. That's not true. They use 1117s all the time. 95% of the time, they buy 1117 machines. They don't want an A4 device. So as a salesperson, how do you keep up your revenue? How do you keep up your quota? Uh, well, you got to stop prospecting for, you know, A4, you mm -hmm. prospect for A3. So during COVID, when COVID came around, um, uh, I had a bunch of uh, wide format accounts and I just, uh, you know, I had to lean on those wide format accounts um, to upgrade some of those existing machines. And this just goes back to years ago where, um, Hey, I can save you money. I can get you something new. And in, in, in dire times, when the recession is there, right? When the breakdown of the economy is there, when COVID hits, when there's uncertainty in the marketplace, everyone wants to save money. So if you can find them ways to save money, they're going to move forward with that. And that's what kept me going through. COVID, which is a lot of wide format opportunities. So with wide format, I'm not sure if you know this, but I also run a web, I also run a blog site aside from my print for pay hotel site that's called Jersey Plotters. Oh, okay. And I write content based on clients that I've sold. Okay. So this is interesting for all you copier dealers and owners out there. I've mentioned this a lot of times, if you really want to get your blog and your content up, 
and 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 you've got uh, uh, you know uh, whatever 15 20 salespeople gather all your orders together one month right gather them all together and say oh this is get get five orders that look really cool right mm-hmm. and the next thing you do is you 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 say okay well i'm going to do two interviews i'm going to do five questions for the salesperson how'd you run into this customer what did they need? Uh, what were the obstacles? Were there any pain points? What made them buy from us? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I'm going to call the customer and I'm going to ask them five questions. What did you like? Is there anything you didn't like? What made you gravitate towards us? Uh, what did you like best about us? Is there anything you didn't like? And all of a sudden, you've got your content for your blog right yeah and you've got unique original content <laughs> so yeah so the the you know just to interrupt real quick the stopper there will be oh yeah i can do that but then i you know as an owner i can ask this i can get that <laughs> and then but then i get stuck at then i gotta write a blog but well nowadays you just pop it into ai boom you pop in the, the questions the answers and you just say Write me a blog. It is almost easier than that. So if you were to take your notes on Word, you can att- attach Word documents to it now. Yes. So you just say, here, oh, read can. that Word. Yep. Here's okay. I attach this thing, put together a 800 Word, a 500 okay. Word, whatever, based right. on these notes. So <laughs> now, now we're back to AI again. Crazy. I know. Well, you're not going to get away from it. <laughs> so, so the other unique thing about wide format, right, is the players have dwindled. Well, well, okay. All right. The, we, we, would you say the players on the supply side, right? The, 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 like the Osays and so, the Ricos. So, so, so it, yeah. So when you look at copiers, right? There's, um, if you're in a big account, if you're in an RFP, um, um, somebody needs 20, 30 machines, most likely there could be seven to eight different vendors there at the same time. That's easy. That's a lot of competition, right? Yeah. And that's a lot of stress on the on the client who's trying to, you know, oh, uh, yeah. understand all the information, trying to find Big out who's bullshitting you and who's not bullshitting you, um, um, you know, what looks good, what doesn't look good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when it comes down to wide format, especially when you think about toner-based machines, mm-hmm. um, there's only three players. Okay. There's Kip, OSA slash Canon, mm-hmm. and Rico. And as far as I'm concerned, Rico only has one laser device available now. HP is not in there? Not with laser color, dry okay. color, dry toner. Right? Okay. Yeah. All right. So you want to speak to, of course, you want to speak to clients when you're, uh, I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here. That's okay, yeah. But, but inkjet, think about inkjet. Everybody knows that ink is so damn expensive, right? Yes. Right? So I have uh, uh, um, copies of invoices to end users where they bill 93 cents per milliliter of ink. How many milliliters are in a liter? A thousand. Well, a thousand. Yes. So what's the price for a, a liter? How much was of it? 95 93 cents. cents a milliliter. It's, it's $930. No, no, it's 93. <laughs> 90, yeah, close. $93 <laughs> a liter. <laughs> right? Well, that's, yeah. So how about a gallon? How many liters are in a gallon? I was told there'd be no math. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think there's somewhere in between four to five liters or something like that. So you take the I know there are 20 some shots in 750 milliliters. Okay. (laughs) So all right. So yeah. The talk track is basically with ink, it it is is you you just you want if you're if you're any good at this, you're gonna try and say, hey, let's get into a toner-based device because even though it's gonna be more expensive to buy or lease, it's gonna be less expensive with your total cost of operation. Okay. Right. All right. Right. So that's always worked out. That's worked out 
well for me with less competition you only have three players to overcome and if you're a dealer and you have yeah. two of the three you're at a, a distinct advantage right now let's move it we'll move one move it one more step right let's talk about color as you know color can be ink or it can be toner based right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right there in the dry toner there's only one player that's it one manufacturer kip. who is it is it kip it's kip yeah so people will say well how about the osa well understand osa is owned by canon now but the osa uh, um color wave is actually those little crayons pearls they look like little toner they call no them way. pearls yeah like yeah. the old page uh, page pack. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Xerox uh, phasers. Phasers, yeah. The, yeah. the the crayons. Yeah, okay. Crayons. So these are little toner balls, right? They look like little gum. Oddly, that was like... one of my nicknames in college. <laughs> they look like gum balls, right? Yeah. And, and what happens, what happens is they melt. It's a resin and they melt the resin. So in essence, it be, it's a, it's a, dry particle when it goes in but when it's ready to yeah it uh, hits the page in a liquid image, form it's right? liquid yeah. it's 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 molten liquid right because it yep. heats it up so that is not a dry process right to me Got it. that's going to be a quasi ink type process so our real quick on the color wide format uh, we're not talking posters are we or we're just talking designs and and architectural things all right so uh, aec architectural but okay. some of the 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 some of the the, the higher end ink jets and the kit machine they can do an amazing quality on posters okay all, all right, right. The, the 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 thing with inkjet of course the inkjet is going to have your highest cost of operation right for the right. for the pricing of the ink so so yes i look for wide format because basically your revenue is a lot higher. Your average cost for wide format is going to be about anywhere from well, average, maybe $16,000. And then once you get into color, they're going to be twenty eight dollars to $30,000. Okay. It doesn't take too many machines to make your quota. Right. And would you, I'm going to dive in now. I love this. So would you say the sales cycle is roughly the same? In time, yeah. in, in, in the amount of time, 30, 60, 90 versus, okay. So that's the, relatively the same. Yeah. Um, so there, here's the question. Would it be, so how easy is it for a sales rep to transition in your opinion? Should it be a more, I mean, a more seasoned rep can make the pivot. I'm guessing, right. They can make a pivot from anything to anything or, or am I oversimplifying it? Is it, you know, what's the, what are the challenges and would a new guy have a new person have the, the biggest yeah. challenge I see with reps is they don't want to spend the time to educate themselves. Hmm. Uh, so, you know, you can train somebody as much as you want, but 80%, you're going to lose 80% of that. Right. Right away. I, I believe if you really want to get your wide format team up and running, I believe you probably will need um, training twice in 45 minutes, twice a month. And because that's machine, that's on the machine and the technical mechanical. The machine, the technical, the sizes of paper, yeah. the different technologies available. Um, and, and you know what, what? what's missing, what I believe is really missing from our industry, and, and I still believe it's needed. I could probably... Go to 20 salespeople, and I could probably ask them to explain to me how the prick process works. The seven-step zero graphic process? Mm -hmm. They don't know. And no one's going to be able to tell well, how it works. No, and, and to be fair, Art, it really, I mean, it used to be a big differentiator. You know, that was a big deal. Now, it's not as big as it once was. No, but, no, no, it's not. But if you can understand the process you can then uh you can then figure out the difference between ink technology yep. resin technology lay, latex which is ink and toner dry 
toner, you can then see what the advantages, the pros and cons yeah. are for each technology. Well, that brings up an interesting point. Art, what do you think most of the reps are being trained on then nowadays? No, I don't. I don't know. Um, what are they being trained on? Prospecting. <laughs> so just cold calling and doing that. The and then we're talking about the old school, the old school, the 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 cold calling, the prospecting, the shoe leather, the knocking on doors, and you know sending out remote control devices without the controller kind of stuff. Knocking on doors, getting a hold of people, getting people interested, uh, trying to find someone who's uh, trying to find somebody who's in the uh, in, in the market. Yeah. Um, well, so I'm assuming that's. I mean, you've been successful through the last as long as I've known you, and through the tough times. And this is maybe the second tough, maybe the third that I can remember knowing you because we went through what the financial crisis. Financial crisis. In, um, uh, in the in the eight, uh no that was in uh when was that well i was in california so 2000 oh wait yeah, yeah. Eight, oh eight oh nine eight. right yeah. and then you had um i had it back in uh 80 88 oh. 86 87 86 87 88 back then high interest rates that was pretty tough back then well that was initially in the uh like 80 and 81 Mm -hmm. uh no no, no 1990 yeah. 97 98 oh okay well the 80s were the reagan years so yes yeah so the clinton, 90s all right probably clinton years 97 98 were uh right before uh bush one mm -hmm. right and then the financial meltdown covid COVID. and i think we're heading towards uh another um i think we're heading towards something pretty pretty yeah pretty big this this year later this year we're looking at the the carter years close to the carter years but oh well right. we, we lease, rate, that. lease rates can't keep going up um the price of materials can't keep going up and i i, I understand there's going to be a slight a slight pause in the uh in the uh interest rates they may not uh, happened in, in January or February. Um, but, you know, I've got somebody who's deep into the financial markets and says this can't continue like this. Mm -hmm. It can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of that, Art, how's it been on the leasing front? Um, more denials, more strict? No, no, actually, denials are probably, um, hmm. how can I say, approvals are better than ever. Okay. A very rare yeah. do I run across somebody who's, uh, you know, Can't got a denial. It. And now that you said it, I'll probably get one tomorrow. Sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that to you. You're right. You probably did, Jinx. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> right. Um. All right. So, well, how about the IT side, Art? IT services. What's Stratix doing with IT services? And and that's something I heard that you you looked at, but I don't think you've personally gotten in, into that side of the biz, right? Correct. So okay. um, so I you know I Stratix does a great job with the uh, managed IT. Mm -hmm. Um, they have uh you know uh, uh, every rep can basically you know delve into imaging or content or IT, and we've got you know we've got people in place to, if you need an expert, we're not going outside our co company to bring in an expert. Okay. We're bringing somebody inside the company. And, 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 and I'm in New Jersey, New Jersey for me is a, is a horse of a different color. New really? Jersey is in that megalopolis from Boston to DC. Oh, sure. Right. And I believe that the whole IT um, companies have evolved. They were the first evolvers. They were the first ones to start bigger IT companies to grow, right? The mom and pops are, most of the mom and pops are gone. Most of my cousin doing it is now gone. Oh, and I see you've what you're got, saying. You've got, you've got um, um, older companies that are well-established and there's many of them okay right? you talk about well-established it companies right yeah yep. it companies okay. manage it providers you know uh companies that that hone their 
uh, their craft on starting their own IT company and have grown uh, to million dollar companies and have, um, you know, they're uh, as much as a, a $40 million uh, 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 copier company has honed their skills and had the right um, stack of technology. So have these IT companies, right? So it's, it's uh, for, for a guy who's been, um, how can I say, it's, it's hard to find that new that that new business it's hard to it's hard to take if there's no pain it's hard to take over that business oh yeah and and it's sometimes it's hard to find that pain because when you talk about now it right mm -hmm. you know a lot of people who run it are not those not as outgoing as a salesperson, I mean, a copier salesperson. Well, or yeah. or or you know the regular, you know, not a regular. They're regular people, but right. they're they're not as outgoing. They hold the they're yes. uh, uh, introvert, right? Mm -hmm. Right, and 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 they don't they they don't want to get on the phone. They they're set. They don't want to. They're sell. set in their ways. They don't want yep. to change. Right? right. Right. That's the issues that I find. Now, somebody else may be much better at it, but I've learned a long time ago that you try and, you know, you focus on what you're good at. Called the path of least resistance. And that makes a lot of sense. That's fine. Right. That's great. Right. Hey, Art, what have you found? Out? I mean, I should have asked you this earlier. So management services, right? That's where I, again, I, you and I have had this conversation. We'll have it again in front of everyone. So MPS is dead. I killed it maybe, or it was killed three, four, five years ago. Uh, just you know, I was on. I was one of the evangelists in the early days. It was yeah. great. We had a blast. I mean, we sold sold a lot. I sold a lot of MPS. Um, it never took off the way I expected it to. As a matter of fact, it went away. But now, especially post COVID, I am hearing, and I know these for these are facts that MPS contracts are increasing. Now, whatever that yeah. means, right? That, mm. yes. but and and from who I talk to, customers are now asking copier dudes well can you do mps right back in the days the customers didn't know what mps from pms they just yep. didn't know the difference right yep. so yep. now it's coming back that way and from what i understand and again it's anecdotal but it makes sense right covid focused made the it departments focus more on remote connectivity uh the staffs got reduced because of covid yep. you went from 10 to 5 you want to do more with less yeah, more with less, and printers are the last things I want to do as an IT guy. The last, I don't. You know. Yeah, that and 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 as far as I hear, print servers too. They don't even want to deal with. Yeah, print nobody servers. wants to. Oh my and, god! And, and migrate that all that stuff to the migrate all that stuff to the cloud. I did account. Right. Yes, I got an account yesterday, right? Oh no, um, kid. We, we were right. talking. We were talking an existing account. I've got all the copy of business, and he started talking about these uh, single use printers that he's got. And I go, well, show me. And I'm looking at mm -hmm. HP 60 page minute printers that have millions of pages on them. Oh, millions. Which one is that? Yeah. Um, and, he's, and, and, he, and he's saying, well, you know, uh, can you, can you let me know about new printers and can you manage? Can you hmm. help me manage these printers? So we put a, uh, was it a DC, right? No, the DCA. DCA on it today. Yep. It turned up 37 printers. Who's DCA? Do you remember by any chance? No. It doesn't no. matter. All right. And, we, and there was 30. I don't know if it was 37. It was a lot. Yeah, 30. The total amount of prints was over 8 million. In total, in lifetime. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see what their 30 day monthly is. Sounds like if they're there, they're using them. Yeah. Right. Yep, I actually so, got to get. I'm actually calling back. I'm getting a meter read in three days because I've got a meeting with them late next week. Um, you know, it seems like they want to close some business before the end of the month. Oh, perfect. And I need to close some business before the end of the month. Well, yeah. So an MPS contract will help, and maybe some new sales and things like that. So, 
well, that's cool. I didn't even know that by asking you. So you've kind of supported what I've seen anyway, or been told that it is turning. It's still yeah. alive. It's and, been resurrected. And wow. I see a lot, see a lot of the uh, press releases that are not actually press releases. They're uh, press, well, they're <laughs> press releases on buy our, buy our report. Right. Yeah. I look, I look at the Tons price. And, I look at the price of the report. And I said, I'm not buying that. Anyway, Don't all of them have projections of MPS still growing at mm -hmm. a decent card of eight to, I think, 18 to 13%. Which is pretty dang good. Oh, no, no, it's that's really like, good. Uh, yeah, that's coming from me. And I figured so, three so, to 4%. So, so let's go back a step, right? Mm -hmm. Print is dying. <laughs> well, at an eight to 13% card, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, what do you mean? So, of course, it's not really the print is quote on quote unquote dying. Okay, it is sure, right? Ever uh, the number of providers is slipping. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Okay, right. so what's what's and the interest of a, of a you know customer wanting to manage that has dropped immensely. So there's three at least three or four different variables that, and even with print quote dying, it isn't dying it's you know decreasing it always even if it decreases eight percent right. which it has been when there's right? been especially when there's been a recession yeah recessions uh COVID. now i know that print volumes again print volumes that i've talked to people are at or above COVID levels which to me kind of blows my mind but it's true right so they've reached COVID pre COVID, and now they're a little bit higher than when they were pre COVID. Now, again, you just can't, that's not a linear thing. There's all sorts of things that, that hit that. And it might be remote or hybrid that people, when they do come in the office, those are the ones that are going to print it. it. There could be a whole, doesn't matter. Bottom line is it's, it's, it's at that point. So right. I think, you know, print dying, I, I believe that print is shifting still. And yeah. here's another thing. Document management and digitization, right? The digital transformation all before COVID, it was the hottest thing that we would talk about on our side, like documentum or, or, or whatever you had to have it. Yeah. And it was going to take six months to implement this because then we're going to have smart workflows and all this crap. And now everyone wants to do some sort of digital workflow and everyone does. Dig when I say everyone does, it's, it's the, the PDF guys. It's, um, no, it doesn't matter if you're a medical billing, you've got document management system built into it. If you, if you bill for uh, manufacturing suppliers and things like that, they've got doc, doc man built into their system. So now everybody's doing document management. Yeah. And but, but I mean, you, is that what you're seeing or what, you know, well, we're... I, I, at this account I was at yesterday, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. They actually said, well, we've got our, um, our main business, uh, uh, they're a truck manufacturer. Well, they make okay, so they've got their line, they've got their manufacturing. Well, let's software. let's say a dealer, okay. Oh, okay, a reseller, okay. So that software that they that they're dealing with, that they're dealing with, right? Mm -hmm. Um, they had another company that was integrating for their quote unquote document management mm -hmm. and can't integrate anymore. So now they're left with a partial. Uh, a partial program that they were working on for document management and now are looking for someone else. And then I'm going, okay, well, what happens if they can't, you know, they, they don't want to, or they're sold or they don't want to integrate in the future. It's a very dynamic environment. You're, period. You're, yeah. Right. So these integ integrators, which I don't know much about, but that little talk track told me basically, uh, you, you should keep all your document management in a separate silo. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's always been tough, right? And it's, it's like Reynolds and Reynolds is one of those automotive systems. And all these systems came out of, I'm going to work and I'm going to help these car or whatever it is, produce company, restaurants, um, manufacturing, automobile, automobile sales. They're all very specific and software came out written for that specific thing document management came out afterwards right. right so now i want my customers to be able to sign the agreement and then scan it in well, okay that's all right you can do that and then we just archived it now i want to be able to digital workflow the whole contract uh process from customer experience to delivery now that's a whole nother uh, can of worms 
you can have a system outside of your CRM and your accounting system that does that, right. which is what most people did. And then the accounting system started to say, well, we can do this. And now it's just, you know, and that was only partial. Well, we can't do the order entry, but we can do the POs and, and, and your, you know, accounts or accounts payable side and we can doc man that. Right. So what your customer's gone through is probably very common. And then the customers are always making mistakes and what they choose in the, you know, they're not mistakes, but they're, they're, they choose a path eight years ago or five years ago. And by the time you want to do this, well, you can't, <laughs> it's right. look at our stuff. When we go, what was it? Um, what did Icon have before? It was OMD or Oracle. I forget. One of the big, huge yeah. accounting systems. Yeah. A cluster. Well, look at look at some, I mean, uh, a DCA, a big DCA oh. that was popular in the past was Print Audit. Print Audit, FM Audit, well, Print Fleet. They were all. I mean, yep. after Print Audit got bought, it kind of went, you know. Well, we could, there's a great conversation there. The company that bought them all right. pretty much killed them all. Correct. Correct. So, so it was a dicey situation to begin with, and now they just made even. You know, it, the only people that really got hurt in that were the were the customers. I mean, correct. if I owned, I'm not picking on it, but if I owned Print Fleet and sold it off, I made that was my parachute right there. Boom. Right. Right. Yeah. Hey, uh, we're going to end this show. We've been on for almost 48 minutes. I almost feel right. like uh, it's been a version of uh, Alice's Restaurant. <laughs> Move, move from one location to another location. <laughs> All right, well, that's cool. So, um, so everybody, I want to thank you very much for the show today, and please tune in next week. Because hey, we're, we're gonna have another one next week and we'll push it. But anyway, uh, this will this will be archived, right? It's available. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll yeah we're gonna archive there. it, and we're probably gonna. I think I might even break it into a different couple different chunks. Sounds um, good because we've got forty eight minutes here and. I don't know who the hell's got 48 minutes to listen to us at one pass. Well, some very important and intelligent people. Very true. All right, Art. Sounds right. good. Everyone, tune in to us uh, next week. We're going to be on at 4 p.m. every uh, Friday, unless uh, the world uh, comes to an end. Don't say <laughs> Or and the you, aliens come down. I was just gonna say now we got now now that UFOs are real, it can happen any day. Yeah. <laughs> now, now that All right, my